everyone. Today on the plastic canvas we're painting a crawling one from Mansions of Madness. from the plastic canvas and welcome to another Mansions of Madness miniature painting video. Um, Mansions of Madness is a co-op exploration game where players are taking on the role of paranormal investigators going into different locations to investigate some strange events try and get to the bottom of what's going on. Um, being a horror theme game, um, lots of bad guys to go up against and this here the crawling one is one of those baddies. Um, as you can see, um, he's already been primed. Um, some of the other minis in this series, um, I'm priming them at the start of the video um, because not all of them were previously primed, um, but that's because before I started this channel, um, we started to, to some degree, paint up some of these minis. So, um, yeah, some of those ones that were started a little while ago, I've already got a, got a prime on them um, and they've all been glued down to the base um, because they don't really fit very well into the base. Um, they really come out really, really easily. We didn't want them when we were playing for them to, to be falling out or having to put them back together each time. So we glued them in back when we got this game, which was a couple of, what, a couple of years ago um, before we even thought about painting them. Um, now in each base, um, there's a couple of spots here where the card that goes inside, um, you can see some of the details. So we've got the name, a couple of numbers that are referred to during the game, um, and then a bit, bit of text on the back um, and here it says huge and hulking this worm-like creature writhes slowly forward eating everything in its path now on the card just um, sort of in the middle there is a bit of artwork um, I can't get oh no I can maybe I might actually leave that one in there so I can it looks like I will be able to get that card out but I do have another one of the crawling one sitting sitting off to the side um, and you can see here that's that's the same card that's that's inside and so you can see there's a little, little bit of artwork on there um, now a lot of the um, the artwork for the different creatures in mansions of madness have a lot of brown in them um, sort of brown and some dark reds and things like that um, I'm not going to be sticking to to this artwork for for all of the minis um, and not going to be with with the crawling one just because I want to add a little bit of more um, um, colour variation so that when they're out on the board it's not just a sea of brown there's going to be some different colours in there. So what I'm thinking of doing with the crawling one is to wet blend some different tones in and I'm thinking I might start with a purple up on the head that blends down to a blue through the neck and then along the arms and maybe blend back into purple for, for the claws um, and then down into a green across the top of the tentacles and then finish down the bottom with a brown um, just yeah just to create a bit of a, a different effect to um, to the other um, yeah to the other creatures um, but yeah so just trying something a little bit different there seeing seeing how that ends up looking so because I'm going to be blending through those colors um, what I've done on my wet palette is this is what I've got going so far so there's the four colors so purple blue green and brown and then you can see I've already sort of mixed them in a little bit um, just in a line there and that's so that as I'm blending rather than just straight blending purple through to blue I've got in here like a bit of a mid-tone in there so I'm not trying to blend you know purple into blue, it's going to be purple, then purple blue, and then blue, just to try and get that transition a little bit smoother. So I did my four drops of paint, put some drying retarder in each of those drops, so that for the wet blending it just increases the the workable life of the paint, um, and then yeah, then just brought some of that over to here, and then just blended it a bit together, um, just so I've got some of those transition tones a bit sort of ready to go. So yeah, so just going to start with purple up around here, work that down, blend into blue, into green, and then into brown. Um, who knows? It might look like rubbish, it might not work, but we'll, uh, we'll give it a go and you only get better when you try some new techniques. So let's see how we go with some wet blending. Just 
while I'm blending away here, one of the things that I love about wet blending, because I have tried it on a couple of different minis, not really in this sort of style um, before, but just in a couple of quick different, different bits. But one of the things that I love about it is you, you kind of, you kind of can't really do it wrong. I mean, like everything that, you, I mean, yes, you can do it wrong, but you kind of end up with some really, really sort of cool um, happy accidents. I sort of take that term that um, from from Sam Lenz, who's a painter that I that I watch a bit. Um, because and, and you're so free with the way that you paint it. It's not a it's not a precise technique. It's not trying to put like an absolutely specific tone down in a certain spot. It's just I'm just trying to go from purple up here to blue down there and kind of. Oh, sorry, from purple up there down to blue down there. Um, and however that happens is sort of how it ends up happening. Um, obviously, you're reacting to the way that it is blending. And sometimes I say, oh, I need to bring the purple down a bit more or I need I need to bring the, you know, the blue from the arm up onto the forearm a little bit more. Like you make those little adjustments. But it's just a good fun technique to do where there's not, so there's not really a lot of pressure in getting it to be absolutely perfect because just the nature of the technique is that um it's 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 just a freestyle of of painting and you just end up with just with some cool effects because um um yeah because you're not sort of really painting with too much purpose I mean, you're painting with purpose in that, like, I want the blue to, to blend into the green. Um, but, yeah, you just get some, it's just a really, really enjoyable way of, way of painting, just to get some really, really cool effects and without, um, yeah, stressing over every little detail and making sure every single little highlight is perfect and that the tones are absolutely perfect. Um... Yeah, you, you just sort of have that freedom and it's a really, really enjoyable way to paint. There we go, so happy with that as a base coat for the crawling one. Um, yeah, so like I was saying before, I have lots and lots of fun wet blending. Um, you just don't get bogged down in the preciseness that you try and get when you do like traditional base coating and then and then highlighting. Um, because the second that you do that, you just you lose the effect that you get. It's really, really fast paced and just brushes constantly moving um, and just trying to get those just get those cool blends going on um, and I'm really happy with with that effect um, and I think it gives a good sort of um, in terms of the colors a good sort of focal point on the on the top half there um, just sort of with that with that purple and the blue and then yeah happy with that transition down to the green um, just a quick couple of things that because I because I have wet blended a couple of a couple of things um, not sort of that many um, but a couple of things I have sort of picked up along the way um, definitely recommend having a drying retarder um, like that took me about 15 minutes I suppose to do that to do that base coat um, and there's pretty well most spots there I could still go back and keep blending if I wanted to because most of that paint is still is still wet enough across the the purple on the top of the head there um, you know that's that's really sort of starting to dry there but everywhere else you can you know you can see how wet the paint is still down there so yeah it makes it a lot lot easier to go back there are a couple of times where I went back and touched a little bit 
you know, sort of up with the where the blue met the green and things like that. Did a little bit more on the arms, and I was able to do that because it was it was still wet. Um, and in terms of directionality with the brush, um, I found that if you're working um, like perpendicular to the direction that the blend is happening, so like for here, it's going like the blend is going that way, purple, blue, green, brown, brush strokes perpendicular to that. Um, and that just helps with getting that smooth, smooth blend. Whereas if you go like parallel with it, you just streak the the paint you just don't get the the blend happening the same way um but that's just what what's what what's worked for me so yeah so gonna let him have a dry um but yeah really happy with how that's looking um thinking i'll probably come back and do do a wash over the top um just so i don't have to spend too much time um shading in all of those because um, there's quite a bit of texture in this guy and all, all those tentacles so you get a bit of depth happening there um, and then I think I'll do a bit of highlighting up on top of the head but yeah we'll come back after he's dry um, and go on with the next step. Okay so here's where the crawling one ended up after doing the base coat. Um, blended the purple through to the blue through to the green green sorry into the brown. Um, now we've got quite a bit of um, sort of texture um, and you know sort of contours going on in this model especially around the around the tentacles um so i'm just going to do a wash over the crawling one now just to bring out some of that definition um just to sort of um you know pull in the in the recesses there especially around the lower part of the model in the tentacles just to quickly add some shading in there um, and then I'm just going to do some pretty simple highlighting across the top. So I've got a um, my brown wash Agrax for um, down around the bottom. Then my green wash um, Biltan for um, sort of like the green section around there. Um, Drucken off Nightshade, my blue one for obviously the blue sections. Um, but then I don't actually have a purple wash. The closest I've got is um, Caraberg Crimson. So just in my palette I'm just going to mix a little purple up. Just mix the, because this is like a red wash really um, just mix a little of that just to make a purple wash to so that keep the, the purple across the, the top of the head um, and yeah just to add a bit of different definition before um, some simple highlighting so that I don't, don't actually need to shade all of these uh, bits around the tentacles with some washes um never done that before wasn't actually before i started i didn't really actually think about the fact that i would need to do that but yeah so kind of worked out all right um so crawling one's now going to have a good bit of time to dry um and so like it's already looking better through down through here where all the tentacles are starting those um recesses are coming out a little bit more because of the the wash settling in there um, and then yeah then some basic highlighting just to pick out some of the details and then he or she will be done don't know um but yeah so a bit of time to dry and then come back and do some highlighting all right so that wash on the crawling one has gone off now and dried um so that's just sort of knocked all the colors down a little bit just added a bit of shade um and brought out a bit of definition um especially around these tentacles and um up along the chest there so Yep, added a, added a good bit of depth. Um, so now I'm just going to do some simple highlighting, just running across the, the top of the head, down the back, pick out some of the tentacles, top of the hands, um, just to add a little bit of contrast. Um, and yeah, then a, a little bit with the base. Um, and, that'll, and that'll be about it. So it's just going to be really, really simple highlighting. Um, the way that I'm going to do it is just by doing a bit of feathering. So what I'll do is along and this is just sort of a, a bit of a technique I'm trying to develop a bit for myself at the moment where um, 
because the like if I take the top of the head, which is purple, um, I'll do um, run some purple along basically where the light will be hitting, um, which is pretty well just for the purpose of this, just directly on top of the head. So run some purple along there, um, and then a couple of ways you can do it. I've got a really really bad habit of just licking the brush at that point, um, knocking off the paint, wet, wetting the bristles, and then just feathering out the edge so that it then feathers out to nothing, which will then blend it into the shade. Um, and then you can do repeat that a couple of times, but then gradually working in a little bit more white into the purple just to gradually lighten it. And every time I do that, I just don't feather it out as far. So when it's just the purple, which is the same purple as the base coat, it'll get feathered out quite a way, probably out to sort of the edge here. Um, where the light's going to stop hitting. Um, and then mix in just a little bit of white run it back along the top where the highest concentration of light will hit, feather that out each way, but just not quite as far, then a little bit more white, but just don't feather it quite as far, and keep repeating that until um, I get the level of contrast that I want just at where the highest concentration of light would be, just running along that edge, and that should hopefully give a smooth um, transition of colour um, and then that'll happen the way down so from the purple through to the blue to the green to the brown um, but as we get into these tentacles it'll be more um, like I won't be able to feather as much because I won't have the the distance to actually feather it out um, and that'll be more just typical just just picking out the um, just the raised edges so yeah so that's what I'm going to try and do this see how it looks um, hopefully it works out um, so just for this, even though I will be like knocking off the knocking the paint off the brush and then wetting the bristles to feather it out, I do have the paint quite thin, um, which will just sort of help with that, so it's not too thick as I'm as I'm feathering.
simple highlighting done. Um, just put a little bit of contrast just on top of the head. Um, just picked up some of the details in the in the hands, some of those um, muscles, I guess. And yeah, just picked up then some of the some of the tentacles. Um, nothing over the top, just enough to bring out a little bit of definition. Um, yeah, so just inside the mouth there, there's just some um, some really really fine detail teeth. So to do them rather than painting each one, I'm just going to get my bone color and just with my insane detail brush, um, just pick out those teeth as best I can. Then when they dry, I'm then going to do um, a bit of a watered down non non oil, which is the black Citadel wash over the top so that'll sit in the recesses and just bring out the um, the teeth a little bit more um, and then I'm going to uh, put a prime um, around on, on the base around the edge of the mini it's not going to cover the whole thing um, because what I'm going to go for with the more sort of creature looking um, minis is that they're kind of on a earthy grassy kind of um, looking surface and then with the more um, human um, looking minis I'm using the Agrellon Earth uh, base on there so that when that dries that'll that'll crack and then painting that to look like stone um, so yeah so when I do that prime um, I'm going to leave a bit of a wavy edge to it um, which will then when it's painted give the impression that that surface continues beyond the actual limit of what I've painted so yeah so just going to do the teeth prime the um, prime that part of the base um, and then when the prime's gone off properly then I'm going to come back and wet blend in some browns and some greens and yellows and things like that to create a um, an earthy grassy sort of looking, looking surface. gone off on the base so I'm ready to add some paint there just to finish uh, our crawling one off um, although just looking I still actually need to put um, a wash over the, the teeth in there um, I'm just going to do a black wash um, which will just settle into the, into the recesses a bit there um, and then also to sort of knock down the white a little bit on those teeth. They are a bit a bit intense. Um, and then I'm going to um, yeah uh, paint around the edge of the of the mini, not all the way out to the edge of the base. Um, and I'm just going to go for a earthy, grassy look, um, similar to the other the other bases that I'm doing for um, the minis that are more sort of creaturey. So the human ones um, using that. Um, a grill and earth, yep, a grill and earth going for that cracked stony sort of look, um, but with the, with the creatures um, more of a wilderness sort of look. So just going to put that wash on there um, and then do do the base. just to blend the green in just with one of my older brushes I've just sort of flared the bristles out a little bit um, so that I don't get um, like if I bring in um, like my my normal brush you know you're obviously painting with a clump of bristles sort of all in one I mean obviously you sort of use the tip as much as possible but you sort of get that clump um, whereas here I've got 
individual points. Um, so rather than just sort of having a solid bit of colour, it's um, just allowing me to sort of put finer dots rather than actual just, um, you know, solid sort of masses of of colour. Kind of this like, like a stippling sort of thing, same way I've put the blood down in um, Zombie 15. So at the moment I'm just trying to get just a bit of a, a dirty, like an earthy kind of look with some amount of sort of vegetation growing on it um, and then I'm going to let that dry and then come back and finish it off with um, a little more variation of colour um, just so that that top layer doesn't um, blend into into this layer. So at the moment I'm going for, a, going for blending um, so that um, yeah, it's just it's just setting the tone. So it's like dirt with a bit of you know with a bit of sort of green tinge to it. And then when I come back after it's dry, um, then I'll more carefully and deliberately um, put some greens and yellows and things like that in in the same way, just using the tips of the of the bristles to try and give kind of like an individual. Um, leafy kind of look to it um, but that'll be more deliberately placed so so yeah so at the moment probably gonna leave it there that's sort of got the effect that I'm going for um, at the moment I don't have any basing material um, in my next order that I'm going to be doing I want to get some of the um, like those stick on tufts of grass and things like that so in this video there won't be any of that um, but that'll be a thing down the track so this will kind of like set the base for that and then when I get that order in with um, with those tufts of grass and different things like that I can stick some of them on and then it'll sort of give that give that more of an effect but yeah, so going to leave that there for that to dry so that when I come back with the next layer on top, I can more deliberately place um, greens and yellows so it won't blend into, um, into the paint that's already there. So there we go, so our, the base on the crawling one is done there. So towards the end there, as you can see, I just um, stippled in um, just using, with the, with the flared bristles um, and just using the tips of the bristles, just stippled in some straight green just to bring a little bit of contrast in where I just wanted it to look like there was more grass as opposed to dirt. Then stippled in some, um, a mixture of green and yellow. Um, I was a little bit more selective with that. Um, and then just finished off with just a tiny little bit of just some straight yellow here and there just to give the effect of some different shades of grass. Um, but yeah, happy with, with that effect. Um, definitely good enough. Um, down the track when I get some basing materials, like little tufts of grass and things like that, I might put one or two on there um, just to add to it a little bit. But for this point, um, good enough um, to, uh, to do the job. So we've just got one step to go and that's just to varnish the mini. So the reason that you varnish is because the at the moment the outermost exposed layer of the mini is the paint and the paint is not hard wearing. So if it gets knocked or just through general wear and tear from the game, um, the paint can can chip off, um, and then obviously that means you need to repaint. We don't want that. So um, the idea of the varnish is that it then becomes the outermost exposed layer and it is a hard wearing coat. So it can um, resist much better um, those knocks and things like that so it won't chip um, nearly as easily as what the paint will just on its own. Um, lots of different sorts of varnishes that you can get. The one that I've got is at the moment is a matte varnish. Um, so it has no reflection. So when it dries, it'll, it'll stay looking the same as just what the paint is. Um, but there's different sorts that you can get and I am going to get a gloss varnish just if there's any spots that I want to paint to, to look reflective or to still look wet or something like that. I've seen um, some people 
do some some cool effects with a gloss varnish over blood and things like that just to make it make it look like it's still wet but because I don't want to change it at all, um, matte varnish. Um, and what I've seen recommended from videos that I've been watching is that you don't water it down at all. Um, just paint it um, just with the um, just straight from the bottle. Um, and you don't need too much. I've varnished a couple um, and just a couple of drops. Whoops, if I can get. There we go. So just sort of. Something like that should be enough for, for a mini of this size, but we'll see how we go. So just a little bit of water um, in the bristles, um, but that's all the water that there's going to be, no actual water um, mixed into the varnish to, to, to dilute it. So we'll do that, let it dry, and then we'll come back to fin finish the video off. Just quickly for the record, that amount of varnish just scraped it in um, with all the ripples from the, the tentacles or all the, the folds and undulations, it just didn't spread as easily as what it, what it did on some of the other minis that were a little bit flatter. Um, but yeah, still got there, got it done. Um, so yeah, so we'll give that some time to dry and then we'll come back and, and finish the video off. All right, so there our matte varnish has had time to dry um, and yeah, it's uh, dried really well. Um, no reflection going on there. Um, if you've checked out the ghost video, which is the first one in this series, one thing that I did notice, um, which was the very, very first time that I'd used the varnish, was that um, I'd put it on a little bit thick in one tiny, tiny spot, and it had pulled a little bit in one of the recesses, and so when it dried, it didn't actually dry totally transparent. It's a very, very minor spot. Um, only noticed it because I was looking for it. I don't think it would be something that would be normally picked up on, but it was something that I did take note of and I tried to avoid um, when varnishing the crawling one. So I really was conscious of making sure, especially with all of these tentacles, there's so many spots for, for the varnish to have pulled in. So I made sure I really spread it out, had it really, really thin, um, and it's worked well. There's no spots there where... Um, you can see any any reflection going on um, or any sort of glossy kind of look. So yeah, definitely worked well. Um, so that's something that I can definitely recommend if you're putting on a varnish, make sure you spread it evenly. Don't let it pull anywhere. Kind of like if you're putting on, on a wash, check all those recesses and make sure it's not going to settle anywhere. Um, because yeah, you don't, if you're putting on a matte varnish, you don't want it to be glossy anywhere um, because that will stand out a little bit. But yeah, so now that that's done, um, our crawling one is finished. Mansions of Madness miniature number three. So thank you very, very much for spending the time to watch another one of my videos. I really, really hope you've gotten something out of this video, something that you can use in your own painting, or maybe things that you think you're going to avoid um, doing because both of those things are important to know what you're going to keep on doing um, and techniques that you might leave alone. But if even if you haven't gotten anything out, um, I just hope you've simply enjoyed watching me paint. So, yeah, please do leave a comment down below. Um, something that you like about the video is something that you think could be improved, um, and I'll be using that feedback to make sure these videos are as good as they can be so that they're as useful for as many people as possible. Um, and, yeah, please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video um, and to keep up to date with, with future videos as they come out. So, on that note, that's our crawling one painted. This is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.